Welcome to Counter Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vergili. Thank you for joining us. We begin this week's show with a Purple Line update. The Purple Line is designed to provide faster, more reliable transportation between residential and major employment areas. It's also expected to relieve congested roadways and spur economic development. And as Susan Kennedy reports, officials recently received good news as to when work on this project will become a reality. Susan? That's right, ground is scheduled to be broken for the long-awaited Purple Line next year. And recently, council members got an update from the Maryland Transit Authority on some critical issues associated with the project. We are here today at the future home of Maryland's Purple Line here in Bethesda, Maryland. Well, basically, if you'll forgive the pun, we are on track. Fundamentally, our state has been fairly responsive to our county's concern. They've made significant changes that will help us have a better system in Silver Spring and Littonsville, all the areas where we said, you know, this isn't quite right. The 16-mile light rail line will extend from Bethesda to New Carrollton in Prince George's County. It will directly connect to Metro's red, green, and orange lines, as well as the MARC, Amtrak, and local bus services. When it's finished, the Purple Line is expected to serve close to 75,000 people on a daily basis. Overall, the project is expected to cost more than $2 billion, and council members acknowledge the road to completion won't be easy. It will be disruptive. Construction will be inconvenient. Traffic in some cases will be rerouted. Some properties will be taken. Um, these are serious consequences and um, Montgomery County government is working with the state to listen, to um, telegraph to people as early as possible what the consequences of construction will be and how those consequences can be dealt with. We want to preserve small businesses. We want to maintain livable communities. For more information on the Purple Line schedule, design, and cost, visit the state website at purplelinemd.com. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Starting on October 15th, county residents may update their alert Montgomery accounts. Residents have benefited from the Alert Montgomery Emergency Warning System since its creation in 2004. In the next few weeks, there will be new upgrades and enhancements which require that users of the Alert Montgomery system update their accounts to gain access to the new features. A recent study that examined how the county awards contracts has found discrimination exists against minorities. In light of this, Council Member Nancy Navarro is proposing the establishment of two task forces to take a look at the county's current MFD program. One of them is to take a real deep look at procurement as a whole and, um, you know, it should be a membership of uh, business, the private sector, as well as obviously stakeholders, community members, but also county uh, employees, department heads, etc. And also then parallel to that, uh, another task force that will look at the minority female disabled um, contracting opportunities, uh, our local, uh, local small business reserve programs to see if there are um, you know, other types of recommendations that can build upon the recommendations of the report that we can then adopt, whether it's legislatively or through resolution, that will open up the doors of access to many of these um, firms. Um, so our hope is then to combine those recommendations and then move forward with operationalizing them. Flu season is here and the county's health officials recommend that everyone six months of age or older get vaccinated against the flu. To get your free flu shot through the county's health department, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash flu or call 311 to schedule your appointment. Vaccination clinics will be available through the end of November. County residents note that early voting for the gubernatorial general election will begin on October 23rd through the 30th in nine locations throughout the county. Voting centers will be open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. The Montgomery County Board of Elections will invite all registered voters to vote early before Election Day, Tuesday, 4th of November. Early voting takes place from the 23rd of October through the 30th of October, which is Thursday to Thursday. We have nine early voting centers across Montgomery County. The voting registration deadline is October 14th. 
To vote on the upcoming election, residents must be registered by that deadline. For more information, visit 777vote.org. The city of Gaithersburg will have a new mayor starting next month. Council member Judd Ashman has been selected by his peers on the city council to serve as mayor of the city of Gaithersburg until the next municipal election. The selection is contingent upon the election of current mayor Sidney Katz as District 3 representative to the Montgomery County Council in the upcoming general election. When we come back, hundreds of MCPS students walk to school to celebrate International Walk to School Day. And County Council elects the first Hispanic American to serve on the planning board. Stay tuned, County Report this week. We'll be right back. On Sunday, October 19th, downtown Wheaton will once again be transformed into a vibrant international village for the World of Montgomery Festival. This free outdoor event features entertainment for the whole family that celebrates, explores, and shares the rich cultural heritage of Montgomery County. The festival takes place at the J.C. Penney parking lot at Westfield Wheaton Mall from noon until 5 p.m. Admission and nearby parking is free. For more information, visit our website at worldofmontgomery.com. Hey, mister! Down here! You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Hundreds of students from Rolling Terrace Elementary School took to the sidewalks to celebrate International Walk to School Day. But school administrators took it a notch higher by creating a new club to encourage students to walk, bike, or skate to school. TV. Hundreds of Rolling Terrace Elementary School kids were led by school patrols while walking from the Long Branch Garland Park to school in observance of International Walk to School Day. We have five, at least over 500 students who walk to school every day. And so when I greet you in the morning, boys and girls, it's a lot of boys and girls coming through the door um, just having walked to school. To promote a healthier lifestyle and safer routes to school, school staff announced a frequent walker roller club to encourage students to walk or ride bicycles every day to school. They will join the club and enter raffles for prices. Walking is good for the environment. Caminando es bueno para el ambiente. It is good for your personal health. Es bueno para su salud personal. And it is good for our overall community. Y es bueno para nuestra comunidad en general. But we are here to help protect you and the many people that see around you are here to make certain that that happens. Even students who take the school bus on a daily basis are encouraged to walk during recess or lunch. Whenever we have the opportunity, especially to go as a whole community, to be able to walk to school is lovely because we do live just a tad too far. Some of the streets are a little scarier to walk by, so we do take the bus. I mean, in terms of traffic. It is estimated that 30 years ago, about 60% of students walked to school. Today, roughly 15% actually walk. So we come together as a community to make sure you have the best schools, to make sure you have the best employees and the best buildings. But we also come together as a community, whether it's our great county executive, Ike Leggett, our police department, our other elected officials, our entire county, because we want you to be healthy and we want you to do well in school. Joining us now is Jim Resnick, the Senior Citizen Fire Safety Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service. Jim, why is October so important for fire and rescue? October represents the beginning of fall and October is also Fire Prevention Month. Fire Prevention Month gives the fire department a chance to really highlight on those activities that we want to promote all year long, but it's especially important as we get into the winter months. People are spending a lot more time at home, they're cooking more, they're heating their homes, they're using more electronic appliances at homes, and these are some of the things that lead to fires in the homes. 
by having people aware of this, by having people having smoke detectors, we make sure that people are going to be safe in their homes. And what I also want to highlight is the new Montgomery County and Maryland State Fire Law, which says that with, by 2018, you have to have a 10-year sealed battery smoke detector in your home. These can be purchased at different stores in the area, and the fire department can assist people who need assistance with smoke detectors and smoke alarms. Also, I want to take a moment to talk about the file of life. We also go to people's homes, not just for fire emergencies, but for medical emergencies. And when someone has the need to get us information that we, they can't present to us because of the medical situation, because they're forgetful, the information that's on this file of life, which attaches to their refrigerator, can be vital in saving their lives. For additional information on these items like the smoke detectors and the file of life, people can call the Montgomery County Fire Rescue Service Outreach Section at 240-777-2430 or go to the Montgomery County website under Fire Rescue and you'll find the proper links. This week the County Council appointed the newest member to the Planning Board. Natalie Fanny Gonzalez received unanimous approval. She will fill the vacancy created by Casey Anderson, who has been appointed chair of the board. Ms. Fanny Gonzalez is the first Hispanic American appointed to the five-member board. She will uh, bring a capacity to reach out to communities which historically have not been involved in really the sort of arcane details of land use and planning. Um, we all sit here and we are frustrated sometimes that the real community, the people who we know we represent, the changing face of Montgomery County, doesn't participate in the dialogue over shaping the future of Montgomery County. And so Natalie provides a bridge to um, uh, younger people, communities which historically have not participated, our Spanish-speaking community, and I'm very enthusiastic about her appointment. The Tacoma Park, Maryland Library on Politics and Prose made dreams come true for a number of young readers during a recent book signing. The author of the New York Times best-selling book, Dork Diary, shared an inspirational message. Tacoma Park City TV's Regina Reeves has a story. That's right, as you can see, there's a crowd of very excited kids behind me. She has the number one New York Times best-selling book, Dork Diaries. It sold over a dozen million copies worldwide in 32 different languages. And I got a chance to go backstage with Miss Russell and her two very dorky daughters. You guys ready? She's a seasoned attorney of over 15 years and now author of the popular kid series, Dork Diaries. It had always been a dream of mine to write a children's book series. So since my daughters were very dorky and very nerdy and smart growing up, um, I thought I would write a story kind of based on their lives. She started out alone, but today it's a different story. Would you please quit your job? She said, yep. she said yes. Her daughters, Nikki and Erin Russell, are the illustrator and co-author. The three of them write one heck of a book series, something these mega fans can't get enough of. I knew she was coming around the time I met Kate DiCamillo, so I was like, I have to go see that. It was really, really cool to meet the person that wrote these books. Why do you read them? Because I think they're just really inspiring. This mother-daughter trio are redefining what it means to be a dork. They're just a very independent person and they grow up to do amazing things. A dork is ahead of her or his time. The person that's usually super intelligent, very nice, sweet, respectful to others, but um, for whatever reason the way our society is now, they tend to get ridiculed for that. And what my message to dorks is to stay strong, believe in yourself, and always let your inner dork shine through. When we come back, SAT test scores improve and county officials are celebrating. And Montgomery College gets $5 million for a cyber tech training program. Stay with us, we'll bring you these stories in just a few minutes. Election day is approaching. Is your voter registration accurate and up to date? Has your name or address changed? Go to 777vote.org or call 240-777-VOTE to check your current registration. 
Deadline is October 14 at 9 p.m. If you can't vote on Election Day or during early voting, vote by mail ballots are available now. Just go to our website and submit an application. Remember, your time, your voice, your vote. Welcome back to Canada Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The White House recently announced a nearly $15 million grant awarded to 14 community colleges in Maryland, led by Montgomery College. John Watson from MCTV has the story. Montgomery College received $5.3 million to lead a Department of Labor initiative aimed at helping students get on a fast track for cybersecurity jobs. Cybersecurity employers cannot find skilled workers. There are an estimated 23,000 uh, jobs unfilled in the Washington region and 130,000 across the state. The grant creates the Cyber Technologies Pathways Across Maryland, CPAM, consortium consisting of 14 of the state's community colleges to spearhead the expansion of career pathways to address this workforce need and to close the skills gap and connect more residents to high quality employment. What you'll see is uh, community colleges across the state building and enhancing the capacity to, to offer cybersecurity training and education. You'll see new labs, you'll see new faculty hired across the state, you'll see employers engaged across the state. In fact, we engage 38 employers in cybersecurity as a part of this grant. Maryland is the national center of cybersecurity with over 130,000 IT jobs, 49% above the national average. Yet many workers find these careers difficult to enter. Governor O'Malley has named Maryland the epicenter of cybersecurity, and that's because uh, a number of key uh, federal agencies, uh, such as NSA, are in Maryland, and a number of huge companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and healthcare companies like MedStar and Adventist and Holy Cross who need to protect their systems. So there's this huge growth of cybersecurity, this dramatic growth over the last five years. And yet employers, the data tells us, and employers tell us, that they cannot fill jobs. We built the proposal based on a career pathway that the employers told us that they needed. They need computer user uh, support specialists. They need information assurance specialists. And up the ladder, they need chief cybersecurity officers. So we built this pathway to fill employer need, and we built it based on what employers told us about what their key labor market needs were. For County Report This Week from Montgomery College, I'm John Watson. The latest SAT scores show Montgomery County Public School students continue their progress in test participation as well as results. MCPS TV brings the story. SAT results are in and it's great news for the class of 2014. With a combined average score of 1650, the class of 2014 significantly outperformed their state and national peers on the college entrance exam. The average score nationally was 1497, while the average Maryland score was 1468. The district's improvement was bolstered by strong gains among African American and Hispanic graduates. Overall, 69% of graduates took the SAT. Throughout the district, MCPS high schools have intensified their efforts to prepare students for success on the SAT. Those efforts have paid off. Several schools saw significant increases in their scores and participation of their 2014 graduates. At Wheaton High School, scores went up by 55 points, the second largest increase in the district. And Wheaton was one of just two schools, along with Magruder High School, that saw an increase in both SAT participation and performance among African American and Hispanic students. Teachers in the SAT prep class are giving students many assessments along the way. They are pre-assessing them, they are instructing them on a particular topic, and then they give them another assessment. Students at Wheaton and across the district believe that having the support of their administrators and teachers, as well as access to resources that help prepare them for the test, makes a big difference. The prep class is really important because it allows you to focus on what you really need. Because 
you might have a really strong math student who needs help in, with his essay, or you might have a really strong writer who needs help in geometry. They help you be more confident about the test. They really help you when you have questions and explaining things and how things work, how the SAT is set up. We get to say what we need help on because we know what to expect, so we get to focus and make our weaknesses stronger. These high scores are a key indicator that MCPS continues to excel in its efforts to prepare students for success in college and the workplace. Senator Jeannie Forehan has dedicated her time to the city of Rockville and the state of Maryland for over 30 years, but she has recently decided to retire. Senator Jenny Forehan is retiring after 36 years in office and she is leaving behind an accomplished career that began after a meeting with a friend. Forehan got her first dose of politics in the early 70s when she and her neighbor, future Montgomery Council President Bill Hanna, were having coffee with the mayor. I made a comment to him about something that I thought could be done a little bit better. And the next week, I got a letter in the mail naming me to the Rockville Civic Improvement Advisory Commission. And that was my first <laughs> foot in the door to anything. The Tennessee native has been living in Woodley Gardens for a little over five decades, and she says that one of the achievements she is most proud of is the Rockville Senior Center. The facility was originally the Woodley Gardens Elementary School, but after it closed in the 80s, Forehand successfully helped arrange for the Montgomery County Public Schools to turn it over to the city. It's one of the very best in the state. So, and if people have not been, visited that senior center, they need to. Since then, Forehand has secured hundreds of thousands of dollars for the center's expansion, including a new gym that was completed in 2012. Many of the senator's victories can be credited to her early days of volunteering. She says that sharing her ideas at town meetings gave her a foundation to run for office. I think I gained a lot of confidence when I was serving on that Civic Improvement Advisory Board. There is no stopping Jenny Forehand. After her term ends, she will continue to be an active in civic life which is something she thinks all residents should make time for. It makes you appreciate so much more what we have here in Rockville. For County Report This Week, I'm Colby Ford. Coming up next on County Report This Week, the Riderwood Annual Diversity Fair. And a documentary on immigration patterns from Latin America was the centerfold of the Hispanic Heritage Celebration in Montgomery County government. We'll be right back. Montgomery College has been awarded a $15 million grant from the U.S. Department of Labor. The grant will fund job-driven training programs for the cybersecurity, information technology, professional, scientific, and technical and educational service fields. MC welcomes artist in residence Victor Ekpuk to the Sarah Silverman Art Gallery on the Rockville campus. Mr. Ekpuk's work will be on display until October 28th, and he will also lead hands-on workshops during the month. Reservations are required to attend the workshops. The Athenaeum Symposia Speaker Series returns to MC's Germantown campus this fall with an impressive and varied schedule of speakers. All lectures are free and open to the public. Welcome back to Kind of Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Montgomery County seniors celebrated differences and similarities at an afternoon full of diversity. My MC Media's Alini Barros has a story. I mean, Silver Spring and an event that shared flavors, culture, and heritage. The Riderwood community celebrated the annual diversity fair. It was an afternoon to celebrate differences and similarities. This year's theme was around the Rider world. It featured Tai Chi demonstrations, African dances, a fashion show, and much more. We have a tremendous amount of diversity within our community, both uh, among our residents and among our staff. 
and we were looking for a way to bring the different traditions, the different perspectives together in one event. And it's a great way to build community and a great way to showcase how we're different, but also how we're similar. Well, Montgomery County is a very diverse county, and I think Riderwood reflects that. Um, as you see here today, um, we have 2,600 residents, over 1,100 employees, and they come from places all over the world. Residents and staff had the chance to showcase their ethnicities and cultures for the third consecutive year through food, music, photos, and traditions. I wish they had one every week. It's fabulous. The food, oh, wonderful. The music, the people, the events, it's really super. Just very diverse, as it's supposed to be. Quite representative. Attendees were also given a passport before entering the fair, and then went on to immerse themselves in different cultures. <laughs> One of Riderwood's um, advantages is that there are 2,500 people here, and so you can find all kinds of people from all walks of life everywhere in the world. They represent our history and our roots, and uh, you know our ancestry, and where our belongings started, and where we are now. And sharing culture, similarities, and heritage was just a way to spend the afternoon. For County Report this week, I'm Alini Barrows. As part of Hispanic Heritage Month celebrations, county employees were able to participate in the viewing of the acclaimed movie, Harvest of Empire, The Untold Story of Latinos in America, a powerful documentary that depicts immigration from Latin America to the United States. It connects the dots of immigration and U.S. foreign policy towards Latin America and, 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 and the dependency that's there been and the pull push factors uh, and so when people ask why so many immigrants are coming in here, what's happening, we have to understand the story behind. After the screening, there was a panel discussion which included the film director, Eduardo Lopez, a professor at the University of Maryland. The World of Montgomery Festival is coming up on October 19th at Westfield Mall in Wheaton. This festival showcases Montgomery County's diverse communities through music, food, and crafts. The celebrations will take place at the parking lot near J.C. Penney from noon to 5 p.m. For more information, visit worldofmontgomery.com. Whether you are already serving as a volunteer in an organization or you have never done any volunteer work, it is time to roll up your sleeves. The county's Volunteer Center is asking all residents to participate during the Community Service Day on October 25th. In addition, many organizations are seeking volunteers to help complete projects during the week of October 19th through the 26th. There is an array of projects that range from packing after-school snacks to painting a homeless shelter. It started as the first, as the fourth Saturday in October, mm -hmm. and we've expanded it because there's a terrific desire to serve in Montgomery County. It's a lovely culture of service, and I mean, there's some terrific nonprofit organizations in Montgomery County, hundreds, that have needs for volunteers throughout the year, and so many of them are posting projects during Community Service Week on the MontgomeryServes.org website so that individuals and families who want to serve and make a difference and help others can go on the website and find ways to help. So because of the great uh, desire to serve and the diversity of Montgomery County, we decided to expand it. For volunteer opportunities, visit MontgomeryServes.org. And now it's time to meet our Pet of the Week. Here's Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Kathy? Hi, I'm here at the Montgomery County Humane Society with Pink. She's a three and a half year old short-haired kitty and she just likes to be walking around your house and visiting you but she's not a cat that likes to be picked up very much so she likes to sit on your lap she likes to come to you but if you're looking for a cat that wants to be put on your shoulder and carried around pink might not be the cat for you but pink has a lot of friends here so visit pink and the other animals on our website at mchumane.org or give us a call at 240-252-2555 with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Vigili, and thank you for watching.